What's up, Weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and it's the 11th hour. It may be even the 11th and a half hour, and we finally have the dung beetle finished. The Goron is ready to roll. Joe the Mountain Jedi has a different name for it, and that will become apparent later. Anyway, this Goldwing is now many different motorcycles. Many different parts have become a whole. We have Sportster parts, GSXR 1000 parts. We have parts from three different other generations of Goldwings, and it's all come together to make something that's supposed to be able to go off-road. Uh, I haven't really ridden it yet, and we've just spent the last... Uh, a couple weeks building it, getting ready for the Adam Sandoval flathead rally point. And it's supposed to be leaving in less than eight hours in a 50 year old RV pulling a 40 year old motorcycle all piloted by one dumbass, which is me. And I put all this stuff together. Of course, with a little help of my friends, but uh, and sure make what they do uh, turn out real bad. I got a special skills like that. First ride on the dung beetle. Let's see how this thing does. I feel like it should sound different. I mean, it just sounds still like a GL 1100. I didn't put exhaust on it or anything because I still want to be able to ride this thing long distances. Super glad I'm still able to use the stock kickstand even though it's been lifted like, holy crap, probably almost three inches total. It's always a little weird going out for the uh, inaugural journey on something that you built yourself. Well, let's test out these brakes real quick. No, sir, sir. <laughs> well, the brakes work. If you guys have been watching along with the series, you know that I have delinked the brakes. So the rear pedal, which would normally on a normal gold wing would operate one front disc and the rear disc now operates only the rear disc. And of course I've got that Brembo from the GSXR 1000 on the front of this with an adapter kit from TC Brothers to fit the 2002 Sportster front end, which is then attached to a TC Bros floating, uh, floating disc up there that is attached to a 1997 Dyna front wheel. Like I say, yeah, this is a this thing's a little bit of a bastard right now, that's for sure. We're also running traction dynamics front end, so we've got <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, almost eight inches of suspension travel in the front, which is gonna create some hellacious dive on this thing, that's for sure. But that's okay because the trade-off is that we get the suspension travel and we get the the right dampening and rebound and all that stuff because we have the race tech emulators in there that were all set up by traction dynamics, which should all make for a gold wing that can hop curbs at least at the very least it should be able to hop curbs like this should be able to go off road right i mean could it go off road before sure you can just point anything off road you twist the throttle and all of a sudden you're going off road right and with that seat i got that tall seat on there being able to stand up is a whole hell of a lot easier now which i'm definitely going to need because even though i've got a couple inch taller shocks on the back seeing as they're off a different year gold wing they have the same suspension travel as any other gold wing would have they don't have that extra dampening rebound all that specially set up stuff that the front end has so the rear end is basically just a street rear end it's just taller than usual braking is actually fine just as long as you use both brakes which is pretty normal for an old big heavy bike anyway you know uh, there's a lot of modern bikes that have really good brakes that are a whole hell of a lot lighter than this bike is that you can get away with using just the front brake big heavy bike like this you know you, you want to use two brakes to slow this thing down anyway all right look at that we have pointed the gold wing off road and we are now off road <laughs> is it doing any better than it would have normally? Yeah, definitely better than it would have before because before it had just like a couple of like absolutely blown out air shocks. So anything was going to be an improvement over that. But seeing as these 80s gold wings have 39 millimeter showers on them and uh, Sportsters come with 39 millimeter showers on them, I just said, well, why wouldn't they fit in there? And lo and behold, uh, 39 millimeters is 39 millimeters, whether it's on a Harley or a Honda. So they fit in the triple trees of this Goldwing just fine. Now, the reason for putting Harley parts on a Goldwing is that, uh, well, those Harley parts, you can get that traction dynamics kit for it, which gives you off-road suspension, gold valve emulators, all the dampening, all the speed, everything I need to actually have a front end that will perform like it should off-road. Well, I mean, not exactly like it should, you know, it ain't no freaking badass suspension or nothing, but it's a whole hell of a lot better than what was on there before. And you can get gold valve emulators. You can certainly get those for the uh, the air forks that were on there. The problem with the gold valve emulators on those forks is those have this, they block off the oil passage under braking. It's this anti-dive technology thing. And I'm telling you, that's not what you want to have off-road. Like if you start grabbing front brakes off-road and your suspension locks up, you're not going to be in a good position. That's not really ideal. So the, you wouldn't have ever wanted those 
goes on a bike that's meant to do anything off-road anyway. And contrary to popular belief, you use your front brake just as much as your rear brake off-road. Now, you don't want them linked. I definitely wouldn't want them linked. But yes, you use your front brake off-road just fine. Your front brake works off-road like it would in any other scenario. If you grab it hard enough, the front end will skid and it will lose traction. The same applies off-road and you can use your front brake until you brake traction. Same as you would anywhere else. Like, look, camera, I'm in this dirt, I'm, I am using the front brake doesn't mean you're just going to immediately fall over. Your front brake will still stop you faster off-road than your rear brake will, in certain scenarios anyway. I'm not trying to win any races on this, I just want to be able to take it off-road and just uh, not be fighting it. The ADV dung beetle, baby. I ain't out here trying to win a hair scramble or anything on this bike, okay? We're just trying to make something that's not going to fuck me off, although that's where the rear suspension would really get me. And another reason with going with a Sportster front end is it opens up wheel choice for you, so I have a 19 inch front wheel on this off a of Dyna and there's a lot more tire options for that. A Goldwing has an 18 inch front wheel which is an odd size and you normally only see it in a rear wheel so putting that 19 on the front really helps a lot because before the Dung Beetle had a rear tire on the front and it wasn't real great at anything above 70 miles an hour. When I say it wasn't real great at anything above 70 miles an hour I mean that it wanted to shake you off the bike above 70 miles an hour. Unfortunately one of the casualties was my speedometer. I didn't get to keep that since the, the wheel activated speedometer would not work with this setup, but I'll just get a GPS speedometer at some point. So far it feels fine and stable. Definitely got some shake in that brake. That might just be uh, those pads wearing in. They're brand new pads on that Rembo. Oh my God, it handles like a thousand times better, which is to be expected since before the front suspension was basically shot, riding way more aggressively than I would ever ride off-road. But that's kind of the point when you're doing a little test, you want to be kind of aggressive so you know what you're in for later. You don't want to ride it around and just, you know, just putt-putt around everywhere and baby the bike. And then uh, you're out riding it in the wild. You come up on a situation where you have to be aggressive. And all of a sudden you're like, well, I didn't test it that way. So I don't know how it's going to perform. I don't want to push it too hard. I ain't trying to freaking low side this thing. But I will tell you, um, uh, having springs that are set up for the weight of me and the bike, I don't care if anything else happened, just that is going to make one of the biggest differences in the world. Now it has springs that are set up for my weight, the bike's weight, and full luggage, so we're actually like a little oversprung right now. I don't really think I've lost anything in braking. I certainly have that dive, and the rear brake, uh, the rear brake is not returning like it should. I don't know if it's just bound up just because it's old and crusty and dusty and it's just bound up, or if the fact that I don't have a front caliper on a linked system now, I don't get the return like I should. But either way, it's well, I'm gonna have to do something about that eventually. But for right now, I'm just kind of pushing it back up with my foot after I use it. It's not binding up, like it's not gonna like stop the bike or lock up the wheel. It just it drags a little bit if I if I depress it and don't do anything afterwards. Uh-oh, the fuzz. This motorcycle is illegal and bad in so many different ways right now. Please no police attention. So I'm finding with the rear brake, I still have the portioning valve on there. There's a valve that would send like a certain amount to the front and a certain amount to the rear. I feel like I have to press it harder to get the same performance out of it, but it is working and I tried it off road and it will lock up the rear tire. So I don't know, I don't know, it might be something fucky going on there but really all i got to do like joe the mountain jedi told me is get a line made that just goes from the master cylinder over to the rear brake you've got uh just a rear brake instead of like that portioning valve in there which i think is part of the problem right now i don't like that shake in the front end but then when i apply the brake not super confidence inspiring but that could also be just like, a, it could be a warped rotor. The rotor I took off another bike. I didn't, it's from TC Brothers, but I didn't order it new. All right, let's see what we do at highway speeds. Went ahead and used a Shinko front. I've got lots of experience with those. I've been running them on my Dirtster for a while and they might be cheap tires, but uh, I've got faith in them. I really like them. I've been through all sorts of twisties, been through hundreds and hundreds, if not over thousands of miles off road on them. I think they're great. You know, are they the best tire? Probably not. Are they a good mix? I think they are. Dude, the handling on this, not to mention the ground clearance now from raising it like two and a half, almost three inches. It's great. All right, how's this front end gonna react to highway speeds now? That's the unknown. I'm feeling a little light here. I wanna really kind of take it easy because I don't wanna get into a death wobble on an 800 pound motorcycle right now. Since I took the speedometer off, I have no idea how fast I'm going, but fast enough to be on the highway. 
feels like a little unstable, but I know I'm higher in the front than I am in the rear because I went up about an inch and a half in the rear and I went up two and a half inches in the front. So I can move the I can move those sliders and the and the triple trees a little bit and get that back if I feel like it's unstable. Right now it feels fine, just like it just feels a little a little light, a little lighter than I wanted to. But it still does feel really amazing to be riding a motorcycle that has all these parts on it that did not originally come with it, that came off other motorcycles, and here I am traveling down the highway like nothing's wrong at all. Like I really we're just doing this right now. Like, who the hell do I think I am? I will say though, my janky ass windshield doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, I think that front, I don't know if that front rotor's warped or what. Definitely gonna have to take a look at that. Other than that, a little bit of chatter in the front rotor. Dude, this thing is working great. Dude, if you could just get dual front discs so you didn't have the problem I'm having right now with like less braking power in the front, I would say everyone should do the Sportster upgrade with the Traction Dynamics kit because this thing handles like a dream now. Having the extra couple inches of ground clearance and the suspension travel just makes a world of difference on the road. I know it's not for everybody. I'll say for me, the comfort level of having a tall seat makes all the difference in the world. If you are six foot tall and up and I'm 5'12 and a half, myself do yourself a favor make sure you get a taller seat motorcycle rider triangles are not made for you they're shooting at like five eight five nine man you will always be cramped on pretty much any motorcycle as opposed to what you should be feeling if you're six foot and up now if you're like blissful ellie long tall and deadly blissful ellie six foot five you definitely are gonna have to do something your knees are gonna be up in your chin yeah under hard braking i don't know man we're really getting some chatter in that. Just like when I did this modification to the dirt sure, what I really can't get over is just how freaking awesome this thing handles now. I don't want to push it too hard because it's still a gold wing, okay? And the GL1100s weren't known for being the best handling things in the world. Later iterations of the gold wing, those things handle great, but this one, not so much. I don't think the frames are exactly as stiff as they could be on a 40 year old gold wing. Japanese frames have come a long way and uh, back in the 70s and this frame is from the 70s. They didn't exactly have a rep for building <laughs> super stiff frames, okay? Yeah, that front that hand has got a lot of braking power, man. All right, let's get this thing back and see if we can't get can't get the stabbing wagon going too. We had a little work to that too. I'll tell you, this has been pretty stressful getting ready for this event. The bikes, blues and barbecues going to Adam Sandoval's Flatheads Rally Point. I, Cause I mean, I could have just gone on any bike, but you know me, I got to do it on something weird. And this was stressful getting all this stuff ready. And I was uh, getting kind of down in the dumps here halfway through. Luckily, I got some good friends here who uh, know exactly how to cheer me up. The sucker runs, man. We finished it and it goes. You twist the throttle and it moves. That feels pretty good. All right, let's fix my RV. Well, we're now even closer to when we're supposed to be on our way to Eureka Springs, and I'm no closer to having two running vehicles. One of them runs, the bike at least runs. Like, worst comes to worst, I can ride the bike, even though it's very much untested at highway speeds. This will do highway speeds, but uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into that and see if we can make the RV run properly. Well, boys, much to everyone's surprise, most of all my own, we're on the road with a dung beetle in tow. It was down to the wire and I was elbow deep in this dog box pretty much until freaking four o'clock in the morning. Not exactly the most fun thing in the world, but here we are. We're in the RV, we're going. The stabbing wagon is a go. Well, pretty much a go. There's a few complications now that we're a couple hundred miles into the trip. More on that in a second. Complication one, uh, this truck was overheating due to a broken fan belt. Complication two is uh, what you hear right there. The the lack of power steering, which is manageable. I've done many miles in an old box truck with no power steering and plenty of four by fours out at hunt camp with no power steering. So the no power steering, even in a multi-ton vehicle, such as the stabbing wagon, I can handle that. You see, your boy Shade Tree learned something new today. He learned about something called hydraulic power boost and, and why the power steering doesn't work and the belt starts squeaking and uh, the belt was starting to squeak when I hit the brakes too. You see, I just assumed this was a uh, regular vacuum operated power boost system for the brakes it is not it runs off the power steering pump which ostensibly is better it's supposed to be better it's supposed to work better it's more uniform it's not dependent on engine vacuum wow whiz bang very cool until your belt's slipping and then you don't have power brakes you have just uh pretty much just regular brakes you have non 
powered uh, four wheel drum brakes on like a six ton vehicle towing a steel trailer with a gold wing in the back of it. And uh, needless to say, it is, uh, it'll keep you awake, dude. It works better than Monster for keeping you on your toes in the middle of the night. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We're like a couple hundred miles into the strip. I don't wanna pull over just yet. They still kind of work sometimes. So I got off the highway, I'm on the back roads and I figured when it comes time to call it quits tonight, I'll knock it off early. Once again, pull the seat out that I'm sitting on right now and then pull the dog box off after the engine pulls off and replace that belt on the power steering pump. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Well, so far so good. As I said before, I've got experience with large vehicles that have no power brakes. So I'm not that worried. It's everybody else that should be worried. Let me tell you what, you gotta be some kind of fool when you wanna pull out in front of a six ton vehicle that costs less per pound than discount dog. You keep your eyes peeled out there on the road. It's a dangerous place. Don't worry about me, baby. Don't worry about old shade tree surgery because if this RV tries to kill me, I will simply shoot the birds. Well, I think the old stabbing wagon's handling it pretty well so far. I mean, besides losing power steering, losing power brakes, and you know, that. Well, let's see how the uh, thicker dinosaurs are holding up. These old 454s are from a different time and place from when, when you filled up, you definitely wanted to check your oil. Now that is uh, one hell of a dipstick, boys. And it definitely needs oil. I mean, it only gets about five miles to the gallon uh, and probably only about uh, uh, 100 miles to the quart. Definitely a truck where you buy oil by the gallon. And, and even though that 454 holds something crazy, like I think like 12 to 14 quarts of oil, it's hard for me to think that, that it couldn't be considered a total loss system with the amount of oil it burns. Like the engine doesn't miss a beat. The oil pressure is great, but I'm not kidding when I say it uses about a quart every hundred miles. Like I do about 300 miles, I put about two and a half quarts of oil in it. Just did that every, every time I've ever taken it out. Ah, uh, yes, another gorgeous morning on the open road in a Walmart parking lot. It's 6 a.m., let's get moving. Well, I'm definitely not in Florida anymore. The fact that I'm definitely not in Florida anymore means that it's definitely not flat anymore in a all 200 screaming horsepower, shit bolts and pissing gasoline down there, burning quarts of oil, getting about six and a half business miles per gallon. When I go up a hill, uh, it's not exactly doing very well. Luckily, it doesn't have that pesky power steering pump to slow it down at all, freeing up a couple extra horsepower to make it up these hills. Now, seeing as the power steering pump runs the brakes too, going down the hills is uh, kind of exciting. A vehicle like this, it's all about momentum, baby. Well, looks like I got a little bit of work to do. <laughs> Uh-oh. Luckily, I did come prepared. Pretty sure what happened is I broke the alternator belt again, which drives the fan belt off the crank. Unfortunately, uh, not only am I gonna have to wait for this thing to cool off before I can touch it, but this seat also has to come out to remove the dog box. Back in the day when they made these things, you know, this was one of the very first RVs in the first like 10, 15 years that they were even making RVs. So they didn't exactly have uh, the best engineers making them at the time. Oh shoot, God damn, there's your problem right there. I don't know how it threw both belts but both belts are off now i'll be honest with you boys being stuck on the side of the road in alabama is not where i expected to be right now but why would i expect to be here the vehicle i'm driving is only 50 years old like it's ridiculous you believe this thing broke down only 50 years old only 200,000 miles and now i'm here stranded on the side of the road in alabama anyway uh yeah no cell signal no motor uh no seat you know, at least I've got plenty of food and a propane stove. Well, uh, I'm pretty sweaty. 
and every semi going by uh, feels like it's about to run me the hell over. So needless to say, I'm exhilarated. This kind of stuff really gives me the fizz, man. I know I'm like kind of complaining, but also I'm just like overcoming adversity, beating the odds, driving a 50 year old RV of dubious nature halfway across the country. I love this kind of stuff. So uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. No whammies, baby. Woo. Hey, oh yeah. There was never a doubt in my mind. Of course, there's never a doubt in my mind. That's part of the problem. Well, I'll tell you at this point, I didn't film it because it seemed redundant, but I broke down about six more times and had to pull the dog box off every time. I've been burning the crap out of myself because it's uh, running hot because I keep throwing belts. I finally got to keep belts on it, but I'm out of belts in the truck. So I want to start up and get some more. And it, I don't know if anybody else needs to know this, Walmart does not carry belts. Anyway, hopefully uh, these last till AutoZone. Okay, on the road again. I think I might finally have the belts approaching something to staying where they're supposed to. I am drenched in sweat. I've taken the dog box off this and I have burns all up and down my arms. Took my hands in a hot engine. I've boiled this 454 over eight times today and ran it completely out of cooling. Yes, go ahead, pull out in front of me, I dare you. At this point, I've got nothing to lose. This is a $2,500 RV, but God damn it, I'm making it to Blue's Butt Spikes and Barbecue to the Flathead Rally Point. At this point, I got 348 miles left. I'm in five o'clock traffic, which the RV is definitely not very happy about, but ah, Brap Star never says die. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. Too bad I am broke down on the side of the road. Again, you know things are getting pretty dire when I gotta bust out the dung beetle to go get some parts, but that's where we're at right now. Boys, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to this motorcycle ride. I haven't sweat this much willingly outside of the bedroom or the bathroom in quite some time. Oh, you don't, you play games with me too. I was about to say. I'm sure I've wanted a drink more than I want one now, but I can't remember when. Deer Park Auto Parts open till 10.45 p.m. Damn, dude, you guys are fucking awesome. Whew. Dude, fighting this Winnebago has taken the piss right out of me. Or maybe it's because I've just sweat so much, but holy mackerel, dude. Oh, oh, that feels so good. Oh, <laughs> never give up, never surrender. Oh my God, dude about it just being like reinvigorating jumping on the motorcycle immediately feel good again not that i don't enjoy driving the rv driving the rv is its own experience but working on the rv when you're in the middle of nowhere mississippi that's an experience too you know not always a good one but it, it, it's an experience all right i know i know i know i know there's gonna be people who think i'm making all this shit up at this point i wish i was making it <laughs> i wish i was making it up or i don't i don't know i'm still kind of having fun the minute it stops being fun for me is when there's no hope at all and as they say, hope, <laughs> hope, that's the most dangerous thing in the world. Besides me, baby. You know, I initially put these yellow lights on here to be funny. Like I was kind of making a meme because yellow lights are very adventure, very ADV. But uh, now, that I, uh, now that I'm in the dark on a back road, they're kind of awesome. <laughs> I don't really like this. What I expected to find in the middle of nowhere. Maybe not the oddest experience I've ever had in an auto parts store, but definitely the oddest auto parts store I've ever been to. But super nice lady running it. She's open till 1045 at night and she just, well, I don't know if she saved my bacon or not. That remains to be seen, but uh, you know what? I, if, if I can get this thing back in the road, I'm gonna mail her a thank you card. Deer Park Automotive in Jonestown. Yeah, not what I expected to find here. Thank you, Jonestown. Now, uh, let me see if I can actually find my RV again. Stabbing Wagon is pretty conspicuous, but uh, I didn't really keep track of where I was going. I was kind of just <laughs> in a panicked rush. Okay, moment of truth. As I have this thing all torn apart in the middle of fucking nowhere. Whew. 
But the question is for how long? Well, team, that's gonna about do it for this one because the rest of the video hasn't happened yet. We're in an undisclosed location somewhere in America in a 50 year old RV and I really have no idea how this is gonna go. So far, I'll say it's not going ideal, but I got food and a place to cook. So, you know, I'll just make a, I'll just make a whole new life here somewhere, wherever, wherever I happen to land, wherever the RV stops running next or maybe three times from now or whenever I decide I've had enough and I uh, just make a whole new home somewhere on the side of the road. The whole, the whole world is my home now. Anyway, since our backs are against the wall right now, uh, what brings us to today's video's sponsor, which as always is me. We got all the shirts that you guys pre-ordered in, so Shay Lisi is fixing those up right now because I'm out here doing whatever it is I think I'm doing in a 50-year-old truck. Anyway, so Shay Lisi's handling all that. She's putting all the patches and all the Brapshire shop shirts that you guys ordered, so those are going out. If you miss the pre-order, we have extras. So I always end up ordering some more, like not a whole ton more, but I always order some more, so those are available on the Brapstar site right now. Grab one, they won't last long. You guys know that I don't do repeat designs very often. I don't know what I'm doing anymore right now, but I don't really repeat designs very often except for a couple that are kind of like steadfast standbys like the wizard shirt, the Ken Dean wizard, the Brapstar wizard, which is now available again. So that's on the site right now. We did a reprint of those, just limited in just the black colorway this time. So grab those if you want them, they're on there. And uh, you know, we got a bunch of new stickers, a lot of cool stuff on there. I appreciate you guys supporting us so much. Brapstar is, it's something that we all do together. Brapstar, She Tree Army, it, uh, you know, it gets us into situations like this. And uh, I love hearing about all y'all situations that are just like this. And not every single one ends up being a winner. But, you know, if you don't give it a whirl, if you don't try, then you don't get to tell the story, do you? I'd also like to point you guys to our good friends over at Odin MFG. They have an absolutely amazing YouTube channel. They're making better, better content with every video they put out. And they just dropped an awesome one today. So after you're done watching my video, why don't you hop on over to Odin's. Uh, you know, maybe make a pit stop at bravstar.com first, but you know, then hop over to Odin MFG, check out their video, make sure you leave them a comment and tell them she eats resurgence sent you. All those links will be down below. And uh, and if you got a thought to spare for old shade tree on the side of the road in this boat, uh, offer up a prayer to those mechanical gods, either above or below. Uh, I'll, I'll take help from anybody at this point. Well, you just tell me which uh, which way to send the prayers and uh, which one of them is going to get this RV running first, all right? Till next time. And hopefully there is the next time. <laughs> Be weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.